Hey guys, happy Friday. It's technically Saturday because it's like 2 o'clock in the morning and I have to be up in 3 hours for work. And then I have a big party in the afternoon, so my apologies. Um, a couple things I want to get out of the way, and if you call it rambling, I'll call it rambling. Is First off, uh, my computer's done and I'm so excited. So thanks to Chase Pastel, the first, thing, first game that I am going to stream, as soon as I figure out how to do the streaming uh, technology software, is Friday the 13th a game because it looks so cool and I love horror games. So I will let you guys know as soon as that's done. Five more days until the Facebook conference, which I am so fucking psyched about. And I'm going to do a video each night for it and let you guys know how it was. And Zuckerberg's going to be a keynote speaker. And there's only like 200 of us in total. So I think it's fucking awesome. So I'm so psyched for it. Secondly, or actually thirdly, um, I've been hearing a lot of shit about how, you know, I'm not giving enough information and I wanted to make this clear. I'm not here to read you documents that you are privy to go read yourself. What I am here to do is pick up things that I think other people maybe have not have picked up on or have not talked about. I am definitely not one to go with the grain. I'm not going to sit here and talk about what everyone else is talking about. I have... I've always been my own person and my own video person and try to talk about things that nobody was talking about or pick out things. Hence the phone records. I know Fog, I want to say Fog Hat, but I don't think it's Fog Hat. Fog Hayes, I think her name is. Um, she had posted that, and it's been a big debate between guilters and innocent about the phone records, which as you know, I called over a year ago. Um, if I could find a video quickly tonight, I will link it to the bottom of this so you can see where I talked about the phone records. I even called Verizon and it, I knew Kratz's records were fake. So I'm saving that for tomorrow night's video because there really is stuff I want to get into about Kratz. But tonight, what I really want to discuss is the affidavit of Carl Reich. He's a doctor, very, very respectable doctor, and in my opinion, extremely credible. So compare his credentials to Sherry Culhane and it's like comparing, you know, a 60 year old woman to a baby. I mean, it's just night and day, probably not the greatest example, but you know what I mean? It's fucking night and day. There's not even a comparison that you can do because they're just that far apart. So I know I'm not drunk. It's just two o'clock in the morning. So what I liked about Carl Reich now, as you guys know, for months and months and months, I stay out of the DNA because I don't know anything about it. I certainly am not a microbiologist, nor do I ever want to be. So this one intrigued me more, and I haven't really heard anybody talking about it either. So that's why I'm covering it. So his credentials are so impressive to begin with. But even, I'm not even going to get into his credentials. If you want to read it, it's right on Zellner's website. Just go to Kathleen Zellner, KathleenTZellner.com. So you can read all his credentials. But this has to do with the sweat underneath the latch hood. And I, can't, I tried doing a video before just kind of, you know, turning around to my screen. And I couldn't do it. Like, I really had to read it. So I know I'm, like, looking up but because my big screen is behind me. So, all right, to sum it all up, he said there's only four tests that could be done. For all bodily fluid identification, forensic detection of blood, semen, saliva, or urine, now it's also feces, is based on detecting a biological marker associated with the body fluid in question. Now, one of the things that fascinated me about this report, like honestly, is that he was saying, let me find it. I think I went past it. Okay that those are the only body fluids that can possibly happen. Now it's possible, absolutely possible that you can get sweat. I mean, that you can get sweat or tears or something else in order to, um, you know, something else could fall off the body and I totally lost where I was. Okay. I found it. So there's four forensic body fluids for which reliable tests exist. Now, mind you, um, the Avery test, this was 2007, so if they don't exist today, they certainly don't, didn't fucking exist in 2007. So today's testing, which are reliable, are blood, semen, saliva, and urine. 
now more recently as feces, which they didn't have back in 2007. So he goes on to say that, of course, it's understood that humans make a variety of other bodily fluids, biological substances, shadow deposited or produced by humans. Partial list might include tears, sweat, earwax, vomit, mucus, which varies with epilogical origin. I totally fucked up that word, but oh well. To this day, okay, bear in mind, to this day, there are no tests that test tears, sweat, ear, wax, vomit, mucus, etc. Let me repeat that. There is no test today that tests for sweat. Hmm. Sherry Colhan, you want to fucking explain that one? And shit like this drives me nuts because, you know, everybody's focusing on Kratz. Everybody's focusing on the cops. How about fucking Sherry Colhane? She said that all these tests existed. In my opinion, that bitch should go to fucking jail because she is just as guilty, if not more guilty, than these other people. Was Kratz paying you? So let me go on because there's like 10 other things I want to say, but let me go on. So then he goes on to talk about presumptive tests and um, confirmatory tests. If you don't know the difference, the common sense, presumptive means that it's presumed and confirmatory means it's confirmed. In um, scientific terms, he goes into words that I'm not even going to try and pronounce, but basically that's the layman's term of it, um, as far as I understand it. Now, Going on the analysis of the submitted evidence, they said that every, the guy, he went on to say that everything tested the way they thought it was going to test. But his conclusion is if in the methods of that laboratory, they can calculate the volume of saliva, semen, or blood that would be required to be present for the amount of DNA covered on the cotton batting since the DNA content of these bodily fluids are well known. Given the known sensitivity of the RSID test, we can be confident the testing regimen would have detected any of these bodily fluids had they been the source of the DNA identified. While not definitive, this is very important, while not definitive, this analysis lends strong support that the source of the DNA from this sample is unknown and is not likely to be blood, saliva, or semen, or urine. So what did it come from? And they don't actually say, but he goes on to say the quantity of DNA on alleged hood latch swab talks about DNA profiles and talks about, um, biological sources of human cells, identifying source of DNA and how it's done on a criminal case process of obtaining DNA profile from a biological sample includes an obligatory step to determine estimate the amount of recovered DNA. This step is called DNA quantification. The current method of DNA quantification. Now he's saying the current, I don't know if that was 10 years ago, um, uses a technique quantitative PCR, a variant of the polymese chain reaction. The documentation from the Wisconsin Department of State Justice Crime Laboratory, Madison reveals that 1.9 NG of human DNA was recovered from the listed sample. At trial, it was claimed that the defendant's DNA on the listed item of evidence was deposited from sweaty fingers. This of course is pure speculation as there is no forensic test for the presence of sweat. Nonetheless, the DNA that generated the profile came from somewhere. In an attempt to replicate the findings reported by the Wisconsin Department of Justice State Crime Laboratory, Madison, our laboratory performed a series of experiments on a vehicle identical, same make, model, and year to that impounded by law enforcement in this case. Volunteers were enlisted to open up the car hood of the surrogate vehicle using the engine compartment hood latch. The latch was then swabbed and the quantity of DNA recovered estimated the current method used by the Wisconsin State Lab. This experimental test was repeated 15 times. The hood latch was of course cleaned after each one. The results of this test series is instructive. In 11 of the 15 replicants, no detectable DNA was recovered from the hood latch. In other words, the amount of DNA recovered from swabbing the hood latch used to open the vehicle engine hood was less than the minimal detection threshold of the QPCR method. 
less than 0 0.005. In other words, in almost three quarters, 73% of the hood opening trials, no measurable DNA was left behind by the individual who opened the hood. Put another way, even when DNA was left on the hood latch after opening the hood, the amount of DNA recovered was between 20 and 35 times less than that was recovered for Stephen Avery. To put it yet another way, the Madison Laboratory recovered from six to seven times more DNA than all of the DNA recovered from all 15 hood openings combined. What the fuck does that tell you? Given the experimental results, both the body fluid detection data and the DNA recovery data from the hood latch opening trials, the question of what sample ID might really be becomes for a subject for an investigation in itself. So there's more, but that was what I found to be the most incredible and most damaging to their, to Wisconsin's uh, data, that it's just such bullshit and how these guilters and how other people think that it's not bullshit is mind blowing to me. But I'm gonna go on about the groin swabs. Cause again, I did a video about that as well, that they got his stuff from sweaty balls. The chain of custody and disposition of two groin swabs taken from the defendant during his arrest is neither complete, accurate, or transparent. Such a sample relabeled as taken from the hood latch of the victim's vehicle would satisfy all of the observed facts, lack of body fluid, sufficient amount of DNA for a profile, and would link the defendant to the crime without all of the messy and complicated effort to actually deposit DNA on a recent engine grimed engine compartment metal latch. The convenience of this explanation, a related swab as an evidence swab, and the fact that it accounts for the physical findings observed from the analysis, blah, 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 does not prove even tampering or more precisely evidence reassignment. But this hypothesis is a far better fit to the data, experimental trials, and needs of the investigators for clear and convincing evidence of a link between defendant and the victim's vehicle. So my video that I said that they got the sweat from the sweaty balls was dead on. That's exactly what this guy is saying. And I know a lot of people are on my case about, oh, you, you know, you're getting too high, too high up about, you know, what you proved already. But you know what? I'm fucking damn proud that I pulled all of this. I knew that's where the sweat came from with Stephen's fucking sweaty balls. This guy confirmed it. Um, phone records, which is what I'm not getting into because I'm already at like 13 minutes. But the phone records, I told you guys those phone records were fucking fake. I knew they were fake a year ago. Now, some people are arguing with me about these phone records not being fake and that Kratz's original records were fake. Without getting into a whole nother video or a whole nother subject, I'm going to leave you guys on this note. And there's more if you want to pick it up. Um, but there, I want to leave you on this note. The problem that Kratz has and the problem that everybody has is once you prove there's some things are a lie, then everything you say is a fucking lie. Think of it in a relationship. If someone lies to you once, are you going to trust everything they say? Now you're pretty much proving that they lie every time they speak. Are you going to trust anything they say, even if they are telling the truth? The boy that cried wolf is all I can say. And hopefully every one of my followers knows the story. And if you're overseas, I hope you all know the story too. But yeah, guys, come on. There, nobody in their right mind can tell me they believe he's guilty when they look at evidence like this. It's, I know that people don't want to admit that he could possibly be not guilty. I mean, that he could possibly, yeah, be not guilty. He's not guilty, guys. Here is the fucking proof. These guys, these doctors, these experts, they're fucking credible. These are credible motherfuckers that she's got. Forget her. Even if you don't like her, you think her thing was shit, you think her motion was shit, doesn't matter. Look at the credentials of these doctors. It still goes hand in hand with the credentials of Zellner as compared to Kretz and their fucking reputation and credibility. So I'm at 15 minutes, so I'm going to cut it. It is now 2.20 in the morning. By the time I get it posted, it's going to be free. So I hope you guys have an awesome night. I will probably see you guys tomorrow. And I will try to do more videos, I promise. And that's it. Make sure you subscribe. 
don't hate me because you don't like the way I speak. I don't know what to tell you, but I will do a video every night at the conference next week because I can't wait. And Chase, I will let you know as soon as I start playing and get all the software done. And I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And again, don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and definitely catch my other videos. I'm not going to start researching them now to find them, but I promise you, if you go back to early last year, I think I was blonde then, um, you will see Steven's sweaty ball video is exactly what I called on this. And have a great night. Peace out.